Good morning, church. Great to see you guys in the building this morning. Great to see you guys at home. Don't remember you guys at home. Can sing to your heart's content. Us in the building, got to sing from our hearts. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the privilege of being able to do church together this morning in the building and in our homes. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come. Again, Lord, we say whatever you've got for us this morning, we say yes. And so, Lord, we just pray, just pray Lord, as we leave the, this meeting this morning, Lord, that every one of us would be touched by the perfect dad. Because that's who you are, Lord. And so this morning, we just come before you, tell you we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. I cast my mind to Calvary Where Jesus bled and died for me I see His wounds, His hands, His feet My Savior on that curse Body bound and drenched in tears, they laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah stand and all. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, oh Lord. Son of heaven rose again, or oh, trampled death, where is your sting? The angels roll for Christ the King. Yeah, yeah. Oh,
Yes, Lord. That's our desire, Lord. We just want you. It's that relationship with you, Lord, that you made possible what you did for us on the cross when you gave your life for us, Lord. And we come this morning, Lord, to celebrate what you've done for us. As we take the emblems this morning, as we take the bread, as we take the cup, we come to give you thanks, to praise you, to worship you, Lord, because you're worthy of all things. And so, Lord, we just come and tell you we love you this morning because you first loved us. We just remind ourselves of the word of Paul to the Corinthian church when he said these words. For I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way he took the cup of wine after supper, saying this cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it, for every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you renounce him the Lord's death until he comes again. Shall we take the emblems together this morning? Shall we take the bread? Thank you, Jesus. Let's take the cup to the king. Until he comes again. Thank you, Lord. Great to see everybody in the building this morning. Great to see you guys at home. Just Paul, in his second letter to the Corinthian church in, in chapter 6, he tells us to patiently endure when we face troubles. Jesus said in John 16, that on earth we will face many troubles, but then he says... But take heart, because I have overcome the world. Great words, aren't they? Take heart, I have overcome the world. Last week I shared that to endure, Jesus gave us the answer in Matthew 7, when he said, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, It won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. We have to build our lives on the rock, Jesus. That's the key. And this week, we have seen a big rise in cases again, haven't we, in the news? And having a meeting tomorrow to tell us what, what the next stage is. It's still a time to be patient and not to rush into things. We need to try and keep things simple. We will overcome the hurdles in front of us. You know that? Because in Jesus, we can endure all things. The key is is to stick with God. So let's pray this morning for the government this morning as they make the right decisions this coming week as we continue to come out of restrictions. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just lift the government before you this morning. We just pray, Lord, as they have to make decisions about lifting restrictions. We ask for wisdom for them, Lord. We ask you to give them the right choices. We see that the cases have been rising this week. And we just pray, Lord, that that, that, that we just seek your ways and that, Lord, they would do make the right choice this coming week, we pray. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, for people in our church and we know we just need a touch from you this morning. We lift Nigel up before you again this morning, Lord, that goes back into hospital this week. We just pray for the treatment to work that, Lord, he would be healed in Jesus' name. We pray for Dave, Lord, he's in hospital. We just pray, Lord, that he's doing well. For um, Sylvia, Lord, that she's recovering well. For Jean, we just pray a touch upon Jean this morning, Lord. And others who we need, who we know, we just need that touch from you this morning. Lord, we ask you where they are, Lord, just to touch them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Next week, it's Father's Day. So the Father's Day service is online. And then the following week, it's our first summer family service on the Sunday the 27th. So families, don't forget to book a table. It's a family service with Kate. We're waiting for a great time. The notices will be coming up on the screen now. Thank you.
Yvonne, good to see you. And I was watching all those toes tapping to that notice his music. <laughs> it sort of gets in your head a little bit sometimes, doesn't it? But it's quite, quite lively, isn't it? Quite bouncy. Okay, well, welcome this morning and welcome to everyone who's watching us online. And um, if you've got your Bibles with you today, I'm going to um, look to read from John 4, a very well-known um, passage about the um, Samaritan woman. Okay. So Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. And eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I am a a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? And Jesus replied, If only you knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. But sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said. And this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? And Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again and I won't have to come here to get water. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. And Jesus said, you're right, you don't have a husband, for you've had five husbands, and you aren't married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. Just read it from verse 25 now. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then, his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman. But none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village telling everyone, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? So the people came streaming from the village to see him. And we'll go to verse 39. And many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed for two days long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves, now we know that he is indeed the saviour of the world. Okay, so first of all, we're just going to have a little look um, at the woman in this account. And the passage doesn't actually tell us her name or, or how old she is. But we do know that she was a Samaritan woman. And the Samaritans were a race of people who in that day, the Jews utterly despised. She was, an, she was a social outcast and she was really looked down upon by her own people. And we know this by the fact that she came alone to draw water from the well. She came at midday. It was the hottest time of the day when nobody comes to the well because they're most likely having a siesta. All the women of the town would come to the well in the mornings when it was cooler and they would draw water and they would chat to each other and it was basically the social high point of a woman's day. So this Samaritan woman, she walks to the well at the hottest time of the day. It's tiring, it's inconvenient, it's uncomfortable 
And then once she's filled her pot with water, she would then have to walk back home, carrying the water, which would have been heavy. And she would rather do this than have to meet anyone or to have to speak to anyone at the well. And so things must have been quite bad. You know, she would have been shunned by the other women, despised and not welcomed. She didn't fit in. And that was probably because of what we find out during her conversation with Jesus, that she'd had five husbands and that the man she was married, that she was with now, she wasn't married to. Now, in this culture, women were seen as their husband's possessions and women could not divorce. Only men could divorce women. So this woman had felt the pain of being discarded, abandoned and rejected from five husbands and the guy she was currently with hadn't married her. Now just for your interest, you might already know, but just in case you don't, it was fairly easy in biblical times for a man to divorce his wife. In Deuteronomy 24.1, the message says it like this, if a man marries a woman and then it happens that he no longer likes her, <laughs> yeah, if it happens that he no longer likes her because he has found something wrong with her, he may give her divorce papers, put them in her hand, and send her off. <laughs> so a husband could make any number of complaints against his wife and then just divorce her. A woman, on the other hand, could not initiate divorce proceedings. So this Samaritan woman, her life, it seems, must have been quite difficult. But on this particular day, in the course of a normal mundane daily duties god breaks in and suddenly everything changes she has an encounter with jesus and she experiences a radical transformation in her life and i've been thinking about this woman and i was wondering you know when she was pondering her own life i wonder did she ever pray we don't know and did she expect anything in her life to ever change or did she think, this is how it's going to be for the rest of my life? Okay, so let's have a little look at Jesus now. So Jesus, he was on his way to Galilee, and he had to go through Samaria. And he arrived at Jacob's well, near the village of Sychar, at midday, when it was really, really hot. And he's tired, and he's weary after his long walk. So he sits down for a rest by the well. And soon the Samaritan woman comes to get the water from the well. And Jesus speaks to her. He says, please give me a drink. Now in doing this, Jesus has broken three Jewish customs. Firstly, he speaks to her despite the fact that she's a woman. Second, she was a Samaritan woman and the Jews in that time despised Samaritans. For centuries, they hated each other. And then thirdly, he asked her to get him a drink of water. Even though using her cup or jar would have made him ceremonially unclean. So Jesus meets the woman at the well and he breaks the silence by asking her the question, please, will you give me a drink? And at first, that might sound a little bit disrespectful. After all, he's only just met this woman and straight away he's asking her to do something for him. But in actual fact, something incredibly beautiful and incredibly powerful has happened. In this one simple opening question, Jesus breaks through the stigma of her being a Samaritan, of her being a woman and of her being a social outcast. And he wants her to know that as far as he's concerned, he doesn't see her through any of the labels that other people have put upon her. And so Jesus, he looks her in the eye and he sees her as worthy of his time and attention and he starts this conversation. And what perhaps is really more beautiful here than what Jesus is doing is the way that he is doing it. Because Jesus' behavior flies in the face of Jewish custom because apparently it taught, it said, let no Israelite eat one mouthful of anything that is a Samaritan's. For if he eat but a little mouthful, it's as if he ate swine's flesh. So, by specifically asking this woman for a drink of water 
from her own water jar, Jesus is shattering her own assumption that he sees her as unclean, right from the beginning of this conversation. In one simple question, this woman experiences Jesus as someone who sees her first and foremost as a valued human being. Her worth is being restored. That is so powerful. And again, in that moment, her dignity is being restored because then Jesus is asking her to help him. And in asking her to help him, he is now blessing her. How powerful is that? And so the conversation continues and she asks him, why are you asking me for a drink? You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. And Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. And then he goes on to say, anyone who drinks this water, the water in the well, will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give them will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. And so the woman's reply was, please, sir, give me this water. Then she says, I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. <clears throat> again, this is such a powerful encounter as Jesus uses the analogy of water to help her to understand who he is and to explain about the life-giving presence of the Holy Spirit. And whilst this conversation is going on, not only does the Samaritan woman regain her identity as a precious and valued human being, but she is now hearing how her life can be totally changed by receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit and also how she can receive the gift of eternal life by drinking, by being filled with the life-giving water. She says, please give me the water then I'll never be thirsty again. She's saying, give me the water and then I will be fully satisfied. And she continues, because I won't have to keep coming here to this well to get water. That well defined her life as it was at that time, as an outcast amongst their own people and not welcomed by the other women. Obviously, most likely to do the fact that with the five husbands, but interestingly, Jesus then says to her, he says to her, go and call your husband and then come back. And she says, I, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you've had five husbands and the man that you, are, that you have now is not your husband. What you've just said is quite true. Now Jesus, he doesn't condemn her. He affirms her that what she said is true. And so in that moment, her life is kind of laid bare. But I guess it kind of feels safe with Jesus. And I personally think that in that atmosphere of acceptance, that now she would be starting to experience some healing from that rejection and pain that was in her life. Her reply is, I can see that you are a prophet. And that must have been a surprise to her that Jesus had supernatural knowledge about her life. So there's a bit more of a conversation that takes place where Jesus reveals himself to her as the Messiah. And then the disciples come back after having been away for a while getting food. The Samaritan woman was so impressed by her time with Jesus and so certain that she would return to him that then she got up, left her water jar at the well and says she ran into the town telling the people Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. And the people who wouldn't have given her the time of day before actually listened to her and believed her. It says they believed her testimony. And many of the people in her hometown became believers. In fact, they all went off to see Jesus for themselves and they begged him to stay for two more days. And as a result, many, many more came to faith. And so this woman previously despised, known as an outcast by the people that she lived with, this woman meets Jesus, the Messiah, and has her identity and dignity restored. 
She has her sins forgiven and she gets filled with the Holy Spirit. And then she tells everyone she knows her testimony. And the people who previously despised her and ignored her, like we said, now listen to her. And loads of people in her town believed her and came to faith in Jesus. And they too had their lives transformed. How wonderful must that have been? And we see in this account that this woman's life had been defined by her past and her current circumstances. You know, she was known as a social outcast by the people who knew her. And that was what that well represented to her. But then at that same well, she meets Jesus and her life is transformed. She's transformed from being unaccepted and rejected to being accepted and loved from feeling worthless to feeling valued, from being ignored to being listened to and believed, from hopelessness to hope and to a life filled with purpose, from sadness to joy. And so I just think Jesus could be saying to us today, is anyone thirsty? (laughs) I know it's warm. Is anyone thirsty? And he says, if you are, he says, all you thirsty ones, come to me. Come to me and drink. And he says, believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you, flowing from your innermost being, just like the scripture says. If you were here or if you watched online a few weeks ago, you would have heard me talk briefly about how in this account, Jesus, you know, he uses the analogy of natural water to explain the living waters, the Holy Spirit to the Samaritan woman. And on that Sunday, Cherith had spoken in Kids Zone about how she needed water to run a race. And in the natural water, it brings energy to the cells, which is what would have helped Cherith when she was doing that run. Water in the natural also, it cleanses your body from toxins. It refreshes you. It revives you. It wakes you up. It makes you alert. It heals you. If you remember, I told you about how I had a very painful post-operative dry eye after having a vitrectomy. And without knowing that, I had a bottle of water. I drank it and the pain went. I didn't know that was going to happen, but the water healed it. It hydrated the eye. Another brilliant thing, what I found out about water in the natural, which I found, it's kind of recent really, because I'm not really um, a gardener, is that if you water plants, you know, say like a tomato plant, just by giving them water, eventually they produce fruit, they produce loads of tomatoes. <laughs> it's kind of like magical, isn't it really? So likewise, being filled with the living water, the Holy Spirit, it will energize us, it will cleanse us from our sin, it will refresh us and revive us, it will heal us, it will produce fruit in our lives. And Steve has been talking a lot about the fruit of the Spirit recently. And in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is also described as the comforter, the helper. He's the counselor, the teacher. The Holy Spirit produces holiness in us. He's the spirit of truth. And when you read Acts 1.8, it says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. So the Holy Spirit gives us power, power to be witnesses, just like the Samaritan woman. Jesus said, is anyone thirsty? And the Samaritan woman said, give me this water so that I won't be thirsty again and I won't have to come back to the well. This place, which which represented her life as it was at that time. You know, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the living water, is free. It's free. The only condition is that you have to be thirsty. And then the only action required of you is to drink. And then only then will you be fully satisfied? And the invitation to come and drink of the living water is offered to all of us today, to whoever, whoever wants to come. And the living water, it does what it says. It brings life. So when we drink it, we get filled. And as we keep drinking, we overflow. And then it flows out from us to the people around us. It becomes how Jesus described it in John 7, 38, it becomes like rivers, like rivers of living water. And that's what happened to the Samaritan woman and her community. Imagine that happening to us and how that 
changes our lives and how that would change the lives of the people around us. You know, Ezekiel 47, 9 says that where the river flows, everything will live. Another version says life will flourish wherever the water flows. And so not only was a Samaritan woman's life restored, but the people in her town. And today, that encounter of the Holy Spirit, what happened to her, is continuing to restore lives. Final question again. Is anybody thirsty? <laughs> We're going to finish now. But as we do, I'm going to read the words of of a song called You're Still Moving. We sang it last week and it, it really moved me when we sang it last week because it's, you know, it's, it's off the new Elam Sound album and it's a really powerful song but it's called You're Still Moving. And then Ian and Hannah are going to sing it and as they sing it, can I encourage you, you know, to come to the well, to come to the place of divine exchange, to come to Jesus for your encounter and to allow him to fill you with the living water, with the Holy Spirit. And as you do, just to allow him to speak to you and to minister to you through the words of the song. You know, I think we've all been affected emotion, excuse me, emotionally, mentally, and some of us even physically through the, the pandemic, through the lockdowns. But in the words of the song, it says this, anything can happen when we fix our eyes on you. Anything can happen when we fix our eyes on Jesus. Anything. Anything. So if you want to stand, and I'll read the words, and I think then Ian will take us into that song. So it says this, it says, When my heart is troubled, and I need to hear your voice, when my soul is weary, and you seem to hide your face, I will lift my eyes to heaven. I will trust you and your love. And then I love this bit. It says, you're still moving. You're still healing. You're still breaking through the dark. You're still working. You're still speaking. You're still faithful through it all. And then it says, anything could happen when we fix our eyes on you. Anything could happen when we seek your face. Anything could happen when we fix our eyes on you. Anything, anything could happen. So I'm just gonna pray and then I'll let Ian lead us. So Father God, we just thank you that we can come to the well today. We can come to that place of divine exchange. We can have our identity restored. We can have our purpose in life restored. We can have our sins forgiven. And we can come and be filled and be filled and be filled with the living waters. We can be continually filled. And your word tells us that we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that we are filled with power and we can be a witness. <laughs> We thank you for this account of this woman, the Samaritan woman, the woman who was an outcast in her day. Father God, whose life was totally transformed. And because of her story, lives through the centuries are still being transformed and will continue to be transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit. So Father, as we worship you now, we pray that you will move in our hearts, move in our lives. Lord, we give you permission to do whatever you need to do to restore us, to be the people, Lord, that you have called us to be. Restore our identity. Restore our purpose, Lord. Heal our emotions, Lord. We pray to you for physical healing to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord.
And I will trust you and your love. You're still moving. You're still healing. You're still breaking through the dark. You're still working. You're still speaking. You're still faithful through. In the wilderness I waited And the healing never came Through the miracles and mysteries You remain the I will lift my eyes to heaven And I will trust you and your love You're still moving You're still healing You're still breaking through the dark You're still working you're still speaking, you're still faithful through it all. Cause anything could happen when we fix our eyes on you. Cause anything could happen when we seek your face. Cause faithful through it all Lord wow we thank you Lord for that amazing story of Lord of one woman who was touched by you and transformed a town wow that's what we pray Lord for our town of Bootle this morning we pray Lord like you've come before we just pray, Lord, that you would come and visit us, Lord. That, Lord, you touch one person and that one person then would tell others who would come to hear your voice. Lord, that's what we pray for, Lord. We pray for revival. 
Lord, in our town, in our city, in our nation. We know, Lord, that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And so, Lord, we thank you again for that amazing story this morning. And, Lord, you never change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you're still moving. Thank you, Lord. Wow. What a great morning it's been this morning. Just to say, if you really love that song, you can get it on the new Elim Sound CD. You can purchase it today. It's £10. It's on there. It's a fantastic CD. And so, have a great week. You guys at home, have a wonderful time. You in the building, have a great time. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Lord bless you all. Bye now. Bye.